So my wife was cleaning the closet yesterday and look what I found. Can you see it? Balancing bird, yeah! So let's get this thing back to my room. This is the balancing bird and it is a fascinating toy because it balances on its tip and look at how stable it is. And you can play with this for hours. To figure out the secret behind this very simple looking plastic bird, we need to focus on the design of this and some basic principles of physics, namely center of gravity and equilibrium. Earth pulls everything down with a force we call as gravity and we experience this gravitational force as our own weight. This force of gravity is acting on every single part of my body and that makes analysis of gravity a little bit difficult. However, fortunately, we can always find a very special point at which we can assume that all the force of gravity is concentrated. This special point is what we call as the center of gravity. For an object like this, in which the weight is uniformly distributed, the center of gravity is pretty much the center of this particular object. So now we can assume that the gravitational force acting on this body is concentrated. All of that force is concentrated at this one single point. And to balance this object, all I have to do now is to put my finger right at that point and voila, it gets balanced. However, if I were to add some extra stuff on one side of this object, now what would happen is there is extra gravity coming on this side. Which is why the center of gravity will no longer be at this point. It will be shifted a little bit towards towards this extra stuff that I've added. Let me show you that. So if I go back and try to balance it at this point, you will see no longer will get balanced. Well, that was obvious. Alright, so I've taped the coin to the disc so that it doesn't fall down. And now, <clears throat> because we have added some extra stuff on this side, the center of gravity is no longer at this point, which we just saw, it doesn't work over there, but it gets shifted somewhere along, somewhere along over here. And I just found out that it's at this point, not this point anymore. So let's test it out. So if I put my finger over here and try to balance it, it must get balanced. Ah, works. Now, what can you say about the center of gravity of this plastic bird? Now, if you are thinking that since this bird balances right at the beak, then its center of gravity must be somewhere, somewhere over here, then you are absolutely right. And to make sure the center of gravity falls at this point, at this point, notice the clever design of this bird. The wings are angled forward. Does that make sense to you? I mean, think about this. When there was no coin over here, forget about the coin, then the center of gravity was right at the center because there was equal weight distribution um, on either sides of this. Similarly, if you want the center of gravity to you know, come over here, we need equal weight distribution on either side of this point. Now, we already have some weight over here. To counter that, you can't put more weight in front of the beak. You can't have more mass in front of your mouth, right? And it's for that reason they have angled the wings forward so that you put some weight forward. But this is just half the story. The real reason behind why this toy sells so much is because of its stability. I mean, look at it. It is so stable. Why is it so stable? To understand this, we need to understand the concept of equilibrium. When multiple forces are acting on a body, if the effects of all the forces cancel out, then we say the body is in equilibrium. Let me give an example. 
This ruler is under the influence of two forces. One is gravity which acts at the center of gravity which is pretty much at the center of this ruler because this ruler is nice and uniformly distributed and the second would be my balancing force that I'll be putting. Now in order for this ruler to be in equilibrium which means if you want all of the two forces uh, their effects to cancel out then the simple rule is that the balancing point and the center of gravity must be vertically aligned. Let's take some examples. Suppose I try to balance the ruler by putting my finger right at the center of gravity. Then notice the balancing point and the center of gravity coincide, in which case they are vertically aligned. And so the ruler will be in equilibrium. But we can try to balance this ruler another way. There's a hole punched out over here. So let me try to balance it by putting my balancing force over here. So I'm going to put a pin into this. Let's see. Pin over here. All right, so now the pin is going to put, sorry, can you see over here? The pin is going to put the balancing force and gravity is going to be acting at the center of gravity. All right, now imagine I try to balance my ruler this way. Can my ruler be in equilibrium? The answer is no. And the reason is the balancing point and the center of gravity are not vertically aligned. And so if I try to balance it, so the ruler is not in equilibrium in this particular position. However, if you take your ruler and bring it to this position, it's in equilibrium because the center of gravity and the balancing point are vertically aligned. There's another way in which you can get equilibrium. We can do it this way. Think about it. The balancing point is here. Center of gravity is somewhere over here. They are vertically aligned. So this is also an equilibrium position. But you can see the difference between this position and the earlier position. If I try to balance this over here, it's not so stable. Why is that? This is the most important piece of the puzzle. So let's think about this. When we are in this equilibrium position, notice that the center of gravity is below the balancing point. And when we are in this equilibrium position, if I try to balance it this way, notice that the center of gravity would be above the balancing point. In both cases, we are in equilibrium. In both cases, the forces are balanced out. But there's one big difference between them. When the center of gravity is below the balancing point, it is at its lowest point. So if I disturb the equilibrium position, notice the center of gravity actually gets higher. And naturally, things like to fall down and therefore naturally nature will try to lower the center of gravity and which is for that reason if I disturb this equilibrium position nature drives it back. Nature loves this equilibrium position because that is the position in which the center of gravity is at its lowest. However, if we consider this equilibrium position, the center of gravity being above the balancing point, now if we disturb this, notice that we are actually lowering the center of gravity and therefore nature would just say, okay, why should I bring it back? That is the high center of gravity. Nature loves lower center of gravity and so once I disturb this, nature will just keep on lowering, keep on lowering and that equilibrium is lost. So long story short, if you have an equilibrium position in which the center of gravity is lower than the balancing point, nature loves this and that is stable equilibrium, like this, stable. On the other hand, if the center of gravity is above the balancing point, that is unstable equilibrium. I mean, as long as you don't disturb it, it's an equilibrium, balanced out. But if even the slightest of the disturbances, which you can get due to maybe the air molecules or maybe my hand shaking over here, or maybe due to the you know random motion of the atoms inside this, any of that small disturbance, then the equilibrium would be lost. Stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium. In this toy, the balancing point is right at its beak. And therefore, if you want to make this thing stable, you need to lower the center of gravity below its beak somewhere. And that can be done by adding some extra mass below. But you don't want to make it too ugly. You want to keep it as subtle as possible. So let's look at the clever design one more time. Let me balance it over here on my finger. And can you see, can you make out how they have designed the bird in such a way that there is some extra mass below? Look at its wings. The wings are not only protruding forward, but it's also angled a little bit down. 
compare the level of these wings, the tip of these wings, with the beak over here. You can clearly see it's angled down. That adds some extra mass downwards, which actually lowers the center of mass. So, when I balance it over here, we are keeping this in stable equilibrium. So, if I disturb it this way or this way, I'm actually making the center of gravity go higher and nature doesn't like that. So, this is the reason, this is the main reason the bird is the most stable in this position. Now, just like with this ruler, if you start out with this unstable equilibrium, nature will automatically drive it back to the stable equilibrium position. We can do the same thing with our balancing bird. Now that we know the center of mass is somewhere somewhere below the beak, if I invert the bird and try to and try to balance it, then technically it should still be in equilibrium, but the slightest of the disturbance is going to topple the bird and bring it back to stable equilibrium. So let's try that. Oops. Okay, let's try it one more time. This is an unstable equilibrium. And if I let it go, the disturbance will automatically bring it to stable equilibrium. Ready? Let's do it. Voila! There it is. So to summarize, the balancing bird toy relies on a key principle that the center of gravity of this entire piece has to be very close to the beak, but more importantly, it has to be lower than the beak, lower than the balancing point to keep it in the stable equilibrium. So what really fascinates me is that the physics that is involved in this toy is something that we see almost every day. So it's not some advanced rocket science, it's something that we already know about. To use that and to come up with something like this, it's ingenious. And so next time you come across a plastic bird dancing on its beak, pause for a while and think about the amazing principles of physics that went into creating this toy. Stay tuned for more.